My name is Lilith and I'm the creator behind the fashion art label Zikintala based in Melbourne, Australia. Today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to create your own graffiti tag. Specifically, a graffiti tag that you will use to customise your own clothing, whether that be a jacket, a pair of jeans, a handbag, tote bag, shoes even, anything like that. The type of art that I do with my business, a lot of it has been influenced by graffiti and street art. So I thought I would start off by creating a tutorial for you that would basically teach you the fundamental sort of skills that you need just to do your own graffiti tag first. <laughs> I need to obviously put a uh, disclaimer out there, I'm not an official graffiti artist, as in I don't really, I've never really done commissions to do street art or graffiti or anything like that, so I just want to put that out there. But I do get paid to put graffiti style designs on clothing. Like a lot of my tutorials, it will be two parts. We will have a part where we workshop on paper and a lot of the work does come into developing your design on paper before actually painting it. For me, the painting is the easiest part because that's essentially just copying your work onto the piece of clothing that you want. Today I'm going to be painting my graffiti tag on this small little uh, handbag that I did sew a couple months ago. I did actually sew it from some recycled denim jeans, so it is the same fabric as if I was going to paint on some jeans or a denim jacket. So if you'd like to learn how to develop your own graffiti tag to customize your own clothing, definitely keep on watching. Okay, so for the first part of the tutorial, we will be needing a piece of paper and a writing instrument, whether that's a pen or a pencil. I'm going to use a pen first up, but later on I will be using a texter. I think textures are much more better to practice your graffiti tags in because it just allows you to sort of experiment with the pressure of the texter and therefore experiment with the thickness of your words and when you start to do little flourishes and things like that. First up, I just wanted to explain that as a bit of a foundation, I have cursive writing and it is actually writing that I sort of created when I was younger. I sort of went on this tangent where I was able to find different ways that I could write different letters and sort of create that as a consistent sort of almost like a font and that just became my natural writing and that's how I sort of created my own handwriting and I think that's sort of the same principle that you need to apply when you are creating your own graffiti. So as you can see in the uppercase and lowercase letters here, I do have very dramatic flourishes on my own natural writing and that is just something I've developed. But this is the sort of uh, thing you need to be looking at when you create your own graffiti tag. You might want to base it on your own handwriting if you do have something like how I write. Graffiti tags are just sort of a more dramatized way of writing something so that's just sort of the basis of where that comes from. So what I usually start out doing is breaking down a letter of the alphabet to its most basic form like what makes a lowercase a and when you have that basic form you can then start playing around with okay what happens if you added a really big curvy tail to the top it's still an a but it's a little bit more stylized or is there something that you can do to the loop to make it a little bit more a bit more different and it's basically just how many ways that you can create this A in a specific style and it's all really about experimenting but you're basically just adding flourishes, embellishments, you could add little tails, you can add little curves, you can add little details in the loop of the A, anything like that. Make sure that you do this also with capital letters. I feel like capital letters you have a little bit more room to experiment with because they are bigger and you can create much more larger swirls or little like pointy feet or you can totally change the shape of the letter or anything like that. This is the sort of mindset that you need to have and just as another example I'm going to say that one of my favourite letters to 
stylize is definitely the letter O because at its most basic form, the letter O is a circle and you can emphasize this in any sort of shape because if you do something like a heart or a square or a triangle, in its essence, it basically is a circle, just sort of bent in a different way. You can use smiley faces, you can use stars or anything like that. Basically, it just comes down to your creativity, what you like and what you think can pass as the letter that you're trying to replicate. So you do have a choice here. You can only sort of focus on the letters that you need to create your graffiti tag, or you can do some sort of practice drills on trying to create a consistent style throughout a whole alphabet. This is just going to help you create a more consistent style throughout your whole tag and it will sort of be more harmonious and less sort of disjointed if you've got lots of different ideas. If you have like a swirly tail on one letter and then you have like a really abrupt pointy tail on another, it won't look as consistent. So. Here I'm just doing a couple of drills where essentially just sort of map out different styles, uh, you know, whether that's like a very small and basic or a little bit more bigger and obnoxious and, you know, the letters are a lot closer together or whether I want to make letters really thin and angular points to them or whether I want to take sort of the route of a little bit more of a cursive type. If you're just wanting to create a tag today, that's fine. But if you're wanting to practice and really sort of excel in being able to create different styles, I would definitely recommend doing something like that. So obviously I'm going to be using the word Zigenthaler as my tag today. There are two sort of main ways I think you can go about making a tag and one of them is sort of like how we created our typeset before is that you can create a tag using the same style throughout the whole word and using the same size of the letters and sort of the same spacing and you'll get something like this. Uh, there isn't really much interest happening in this tag. It's a little bit just sort of um, more basic, which is better when you're layering graffiti tags. But today I'm going to show you a different way and I feel like it adds a little bit more interest because you can use different, you can use your space differently and you can use your the sizes of the letters differently. What I like to do is when I have the word that I'd like to use, I like to choose different letters that are apart from each other that I would really like to emphasize. And in the word Zigenthaler, I want to emphasize the word, the letter Z, I want to emphasize the letter T. I could potentially emphasize the, the letter G, but I'm going to be using a G without a tail. So you can choose whatever letters you want. I would recommend choosing, yeah, letters that might be tall or longer, like G's, T's, L's, Y's, J's. What I like to do is basically just emphasize these letters, but then leave the remaining letters quite small which means that you actually have more space to sort of play around with these emphasized letters and you can cr you can dramatize the flourishes or the style that you want to write that letter in. So yeah, as I said, that top example is great if you want a consistent tag and they're sort of more better for backgrounds, background sort of layered tags, but because we're wanting to make sort of a feature piece today, I would definitely recommend doing the second style, which as you as I list here, you can play around more with letter size. You can play around with the use of space. As you can see, my Z is a little bit more bigger and I have a little bit more room to play around with it. I think as well, because you have extra space to fill with your dramatic embellishes, you can actually play around with the flourishes and the embellishments that you will do with those letters. Those are just sort of the three advantages if you do the second style of tag. And that's the sort of style I'm going to be doing today. Just as a second example, I'm going to be just writing out the name Harley Quinn in these two styles. Again, so the first style, we've got a very consistent same size letter tag. You know, they're all bunched together. It's very consistent. And for this example, I'm going to be sort of emphasizing the H, the Y, the Q and the N. And this 
creates a journey in the word where the Q and the Y sort of bulk out the middle of the word. So, and then you've got the H and the N sort of ending and beginning the word and see also how both of those tails are the same sort of style that comes with the H. So that's what I mean by, you know, when you add sort of flourishes like that, making sure it is consistent. It's obviously quite intuitive to capitalize any sort of word that you do a tag with, but you once you sort of get a feel for it, you don't really need to confine yourself to this rule. You can even do a smaller, have like a lowercase uh, letter for the beginning of your word, but then create a, a bigger sort of interest in the middle of the word. So it all just comes down to just workshopping your word and seeing how many styles you can do it in. Obviously, I've had a little bit of practice doing this, but when I'm trying to develop a specific tag that is going to be a feature tag, I will do it in as many styles as I want. And I would recommend you do the same. And also don't be afraid to add images to your tag, whether that's like quotation marks, like underlining the the tag or even adding exclamation marks or question marks, a smiley face or a heart or anything like that. But yeah, this is me just trying to trying to just explore different styles that I could do. And like this takes time. I've there have been times where I've sat down and I just went through all of my friends' names and I just I just drew their or each of their names in like a graffiti style. Like it does take a lot of practice. And so yeah, I would say if you really want the more effective you want your tag to look, the more you sort of need to practice and just keep on writing it out again and again and again until you like it. So I'd just like to interrupt and create a little intermission between the two segments. Make sure that you're not trying to control the development of your tag too much. Sometimes when you are trying to put too many embellishments or too many flourishes or you're just trying to you're just trying too hard, it can show in the tag. The sort of essence of these types of graffiti tags, if you want them to look authentic, they need to be messy. And the more you sort of try to control it, the less it's gonna sort of look like that. It's obviously something that will take time and practice. It's sort of like, it's usually the more movement and feel that you have for sort of writing in a graffiti style, the more fluent the tag is going to look. And that is just something that you're going to build over time. Biggest advice to you is just to practice. If something doesn't look right, then maybe just leave it and come back to it and do it again. Because when you paint something with fabric paint, it's not going to be able to wash off. So make sure that you just sort of perfect your tag and you like the way that it looks. It might take you a couple of days. It'll definitely take you a couple of weeks or months if you wanna sort of build up and have a more sort of intermediate or advanced skill set on being able to just like pull different graffiti tags out of your mind and just write them up so it's definitely practice so let's jump into the second part of the video and that is transferring your graffiti design from paper onto fabric or clothing today i've got this handbag that i did sew myself a couple of months ago and i did sew it out of some recycled jeans so it is the same sort of type of fabric as if you do it on a denim jacket just because of the the gold zipper of the bag i'm going to be using a gold fabric paint if you don't already know i do use set a color opaque and i'm going to be using obviously the gold so what you're going to be needing is the sort of final tag that you want to put on your clothing you will also need some fabric chalk or a fabric pencil one that's going to wash off we're just going to use this to map out where we're going to put the tag and so another thing I'd like to talk about is placement of a tag. You might just think of placing the tag in the middle of your clothing or anywhere you want, but I sort of really like to do my tags slanted. So I'm going to sort of create a slant on the tag and move it a little bit off to the side. I like to draw a line of the direction that the tag is going to be on so that you can actually create a consistent sort of direction and it's not going to sort of flop down towards the end. So you can basically just draw the draft of your tag on that line. 
and you can use that as a guide. Uh, I don't really like to put too much detail when I'm mapping stuff out with fabric chalk. I just sort of put like the main areas I'd like to put the letters. You're also just trying to make sure that your letters are all going to be evenly spaced out, that your whole tag will be able to fit on whatever piece of clothing you're going to put it on. That's what the fabric chalk part is about it's because once you actually paint the tag on the fabric it's going to be very hard to get it out so I would also recommend using a thin paintbrush. You can use a thicker brush if you'd like, but I think having a thinner brush will is sort of better to begin with. And then you can sort of go onto thicker styles, the better you get at this. And then you will obviously just go in with your fabric paint and paint it on. But you just want to make sure that when you do write all of your letters on that they are all consistent and you've got very strong lines. Sometimes fabric paint can be a little bit patchy. This gold that I used, I've had for a long time. So I did have to go over a couple of the lines a little bit more just so that they were strong and stood out. So don't be afraid. You will have to do a couple of layers sometimes just to make sure that you have the best sort of contrast of the tag on your fabric paint. And sometimes you will have to go in and yeah, just maybe even sharpen a bit of the edges or you can even just once the whole tag has been painted on you can you can refine it a little bit whether that's just adding you know sharper corners or elongating the tail a little bit more and if you so desire i obviously do like adding a couple of drips to my artworks uh, i did add a couple of drips for this but just make sure that you're dripping the drips down the way that gravity goes and not actually diagonal because we did draw this tag diagonally Sometimes I have done drips where you will drip it down, but when you actually, when I actually wear this handbag, the drips won't actually be pointing down. They'd be pointing diagonal and it just takes away from the tag. So just make sure that your drips are falling down. I did improvise with this tag a little bit as well, just because I tend to always just deviate from my plan. So yeah. finished product of the graffiti tag I decided to do on a handbag. The really cool thing about having you doing one tag like this is that you can actually sort of get really creative with all of the little embellishments and actually make the tag the feature piece if you're just going to go with one tag. Uh, that's what this tutorial was all about. You can have a tag anywhere on your jacket. It'll just sort of be a feature piece. So whether it's like I don't know, like down across your rib cage or like around the collar, down one sleeve, do like some sort of asymmetrical thing. You could do it as a feature piece on the back of a pair of jeans or a pocket or even like down the hip, down the side. There's honestly so many things you can do. I will show you a couple of things that I have done before. You know, this cap sort of started with me doing just this random tag on the side here. For one of my runways, I did do a I painted a tag across the slip dress, a bit of a tag at the bottom here. You know, you could have like a tag going down the sleeve like this, like on a pocket or on a collar, or maybe just like down here, sort of like where this is. But so that is my tutorial on how to create your own simple word based graffiti tag. Obviously this is sort of the foundation of creating graffiti styles. So congratulations for completing the first step. Please make sure to like this video if it did help you out. And if you learned something from it, you can subscribe to make sure that you stay up to date with all of the content I'm releasing on my channel. Good luck with your painting and your creations. And if you have any questions, please just ask me in the comments. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.